All right, we're going to talk about state machines. We're in uh, 4.1.2, and what the eventual goal here is to make a state machine that reads the last four displays, the last four numbers of your phone number. Um, any four numbers will do. They just can't be sequential, and I don't want any repeated numbers. Um, so I want it to kind of be random, and that, that randomness, that being able to jump from one to the other, is, is what we need a state machine for. So first, let's talk about what the heck a state machine is. So a true state machine is going to start with some, some combo logic, some AOI logic. And it's going to go into some sequential or really into some flip-flops, some, some storage device. It's going to be stored. And then that data is going to pass through some additional AOI logic, some additional combo logic, before we get our output. And somewhere in here, either here or here, after the flip-flop, we feed back into our original AOI logic and cycle back through. So if you think about that, We've kind of been doing that with our counter. So if we had, let's say, a 2 to 8 counter, we had to detect that 8, put a NAND, and feed it back into the beginning or the preset to make sure that we had a 2 to 8 counter. So we've been doing that already. It's just that now we're giving it a name, and now we're going to focus more on, instead of counting 2 to 8, storing values that we'd like to store or storing operations that we'd like to store. So the first step in creating a state machine is really drawing a state diagram, and that's going to be able to show what is happening in all states of that flip-flop. So we'll start out with the most basic um, one that we can come up with. And so I'm going to start by drawing out our, our JK um, flip-flop uh, truth table. So when J and K are both zero, we get no change. 0, 1, we have a 0. When it's 1, 0, uh, we go to high. And when it's they're both 1, we toggle. So we can draw a state diagram that diagrams that. So let's draw out one circle. And all these circles are going to be a state. So if we have one flip-flop, there's two different values that it can store. So we call those two uh, state 0 and state 1. And so on state 0 we're going to end up with we have a Q and Q is going to be equal to 0. And in state 1 Q is going to be equal to 1. So we, we know that we can when we have a flip-flop um, there are times where the, there can be no change it doesn't, doesn't move and there are times when it goes and toggles between the two. So when we're in state one, we have a zero inside of our, our JK flip-flop. There is a time when we will stay right here. And we indicate that by drawing this loop and having an arrowhead coming right back to it. Um, so if we had zero in our flip-flop and we end up with an output of zero, we are in one of these first two states here. We are either getting no change or a zero. So in both of those cases, J is low. So it doesn't matter what K is. If J is low, we're going to stay here. We could write K equals X, the don't care condition, but we're just going to cross that out because J is going to override everything. As long as J is zero, we will stay right here. Of course, there are some other commands that will move us over to the other state. So um, in that scenario, um, it's, it'll be either toggle or this one where we have a one outputted. And in both of those cases, j is going to be equal to one. We do not care, again, what happens to k. If we have a high value inside of our flip-flop, we can stay right here. Um, if k is equal to zero, you see we have a one right here. 
and no change here, those will both leave it right here with a value of 1 stored in it. So now we're going to say k equals 0. And finally, to go back, there's one scenario, there's one way that we can state this, and that is when k is 1. When k is 1, it's going to set it to 0, and when k, k is uh, 1 and, and j is 1, it's going to toggle, so if it's at 1, it's going to go back to 0. So we can write this as k equals 1. That is our, our simplest state diagram that we can come up with, and it's showing that what happens at each individual state, uh, what happens when you move or don't move, what conditions uh, are true for each of those states. So let's move on to a more complex example. We're not really going to use too many numbers here, um, but let's imagine that we have a garage door. And that garage door is going to start in a closed state. Uh, so we have one button. We're going to simplify this down. We have one button, and it is going to control all the operations here. If we want that garage door to stay closed, we do not press the button. We leave it there. If we want it to start opening, we do press the button. It goes to state 2, which is opening. Uh, if we want it to continue opening, we don't press the button. So we have button equals 0. Uh, if we want it to continue opening, it will also kind of go this way. So we're, in the simplified world, this is okay. Um, in truth, you're not going to have where both of these things happen. So eventually, if we don't press the button, it will get all the way to open. We want it to stay open. We don't hit the button. We want it to move to the next state. We're going to press the button, and now it is closing. Again, if you don't press the button, it will continue to be closing. And if you don't press the button, it will eventually get closed. So what happens when we press the button and it is closing or it is opening? And that's where it gets a little more complex. And it's okay if you don't understand this part now. I just wanted to show that this is what you would do when you get a more complex one. So um, we would end up having additional states out here. So we've got another state out here. Let's call this state 4. And we'll have another state out here. This is going to be state 5. And in state 4, we are paused, but we are going up. And in state 5, we are paused, but it's going down. Because you are between closing and closed. It was going down. So, uh, if you were to happen to press the button again while it was still opening, so if we press the button while it was opening, it's going to pause. And when it's paused and it's in this state, on my garage door, if it's paused and it had been going down, or had been going up, if I press it again, it's going to go back down. So it's going to jump, if I press the button again, to over here to closing. And you can see how this is starting to get a little bit more complex. So again, if, I, if, the, if it is closing and I press the button, it's gonna go to paused going down and if I press it while it was paused while it was going down, it's gonna go back to opening. And then I will only get to open if I do not press the button. So that is a more complex state diagram. We would take this and then we would uh, feed it into a table. And that's what I'll show you next, but with a slightly simpler example.